Oh, hello there. Assalamu alaikum and welcome to another episode of the Safiri's Ramadan live shows. Do you like my gold cards? They're my Eid cards actually. And this one is to a very dear friend of mine called Fatima Zahra. And I'm writing, I hope you like this Eid card. I decorated it with lovely gold beads. But guess who's here with me today? Assalamu alaikum, Pip. Wa alaikum salam, Layla. Long time. I know. I haven't seen you for ages. I know, I know. I've been so busy. Well, I actually, I've been here as well, but I've been really, really busy. I've actually been to Iran and it was amazing. Have you ever been? Yeah, I did a long time ago. I went to visit Imam Rida. <gasps> and it was the best trip I had ever been on. I can understand why. I mean, that's so cool. Imam Rida is one of my favourite imams. I have a special place for him in my heart. In fact, I love all of the imams. You know, all of the imams, they've taught us so much, especially about caring for other people. The young, the old, the rich, the poor, it doesn't matter who you are. The imams have told us to care for everybody, including the world around us. That's so true! They even taught us about caring for animals. <gasps> animals? Great or small, just like... Coco, the lovely canary. Oh, hello, Coco. And welcome to the Ramadan Safiri's live show. Isn't he lovely? Yeah, he's lovely and mm. so well behaved. Very, very well behaved. Bless him, just like he is now. Where is he from? And, uh, you know, what's he like? Does he, does he live with you, Pip? Well... He lives with me and yeah. sometimes yeah. he goes to other people's houses yeah. and stays with them. <gasps> That's wonderful. Canaries mm. are really popular pets mm. and they're lovely to look at too. They are lovely to look at. I like his yellow feathers and the white as well. Is this, his, is this where he drinks water from? This um, little blue thing. Yes, yes, oh. yes. Um, okay, well, canaries mm. are beautiful birds. They are beautiful birds. That belong to the finch family. Mm, the finch family. Okay. Did you know that? No, I didn't. There mm. are actually three different types of canaries. Some canaries mm. have really bright colours. <gasps> Wow. Just like me. Oh, yeah, bright blue. <laughs> Some canaries can sing very beautifully. Oh. Just like me. Wow. And the third type of canary yeah. is known for its size and gorgeous feathers. Wow. Just like me. Yes, but you don't really have feathers. You're, you have more like fur. True, true. Monster fur. But before I tell you more about him, yes, I want to catch up with Captain News and hear all about the funny things that have been happening in this week. That's right. And I think that's a really great idea. I love Captain News. He's so funny. And those characters that, he, that come up in the news, they get up to all sorts, do they not? Yeah, bit like me. <laughs> a bit like you, Pip, but you're much more well behaved these days and I'm really impressed with the way you've been just as well behaved as this canary here all Ramadan. Thank you. So well done to you, Pip. <laughs> Pat on the head. Over to you, Captain News. On other news today, a convict has been prosecuted for stealing a calendar. The judge claims that he has been charged with 12 months. Firefighters at the local station were called out to a funfair after it had closed. What on earth for? 
who was there and why were they calling the fire department? Well, caretaker Colin, the cabbage, was closing up for the night when he heard some scrunching, shuffling and heavy breathing noises. He reported he could see some smoke coming from one end of the funfair where there were lots of trees. Being alone made him very scared of all these strange noises and he wanted to make sure that the smoke wasn't because of a serious fire. In fact, it wasn't serious at all. It was just Lucy the leaf and her leaf friends getting together to have a bonfire so that they could keep themselves warm. Colin did feel rather silly, but the fire department understood he took all the necessary precautions to make sure that the park was safe. What a hero, caretaker Colin, the cabbage, well done. A new species of fish has been found. Researchers claim that when the fish was drowned in water, it survived for several hours. Pontus Pillow, the professor, is looking into this at the University of Safiris. He says, fishes might have found a new way to survive under the water through the process of evolution. Good luck to you, Professor Pontus the Pillow. On other news today, for decades, we have been trying to figure out whether time traveling really does exist. It is said that time traveling takes place through something called dark holes. Scientists have now discovered a way to enter the dark holes when we asked what they found, they replied, I don't know, I can't really see. Wendy the Whisk was busy one evening whisking about from here to there and there to here when she saw Sally, the slime, sitting on her own in the corner of the room. Poor Sally, she looked lonely. Wendy the Whisk wanted to play with Sally, the slime. But perhaps this wasn't such a good idea after all. Wendy tried to whisk Sally around, but you can imagine what happened. They got into a right mess as they both ended up tangled up together. Wendy the Whisk had not realized that Sally the Slime was so flexible that the last thing she expected was for them both to get stuck to one another. What a disaster. Luckily, Wendy's cousin was on hand to help out. It did take quite some time to untangle the two, so the next time you see some slime, better not get too close, you might just get stuck. At the comedy competition, over the past week, many talented comedians turned up from all over the world, such as Robert the Rabbit, Wendy the Washing Machine, and Casper the Computer. Unfortunately, there was one comedian, Carlos the TV Controller. Let's just say the judges described his jokes as not even being remotely funny. Sophie the sand grain always felt like she was one in a million. That's probably because she is. She had millions of brothers and sisters, and so her parents were not able to give her much time. Even though her family was large, her birthday would often be forgotten because there were a million billion of other sand grains with the same birthday. Oh dear, poor Sophie. One evening, when Sophie was just lying on the beach, Pia the pebble rolled over along to try to cheer her up. Pia knew how Sophie felt because just like her, Pia was one of million pebbles, whom her parents had no time for either. Together, they decided to run off into the sunset and leave the world of sand, stones, sea and sun all behind them. However, they didn't get very far. On their climb up the mountainside, they ran into their local coast guard who promptly escorted them back to their homes on the beach. Devastated and reaching out for each other, Sophie and Pia promised each other they would be reunited no matter how long it took for them to get together. Well, who would have thought a grain of sand and a pebble at the beach had such interesting lives? I bet the next time you go to the beach, you'll never look at a sand or pebbles the same way ever again. I know certainly I won't. On other news tonight, the person who invented knocking on the door was invited to Stockholm a few days ago to claim his Nobel Prize. 
A report has just come in of a raid on a house in the local borough of Brent. The house was alleged to have been housing a cheese grater who was on the run from the police for grating a tree up the wrong way. The tree had this to say. Well, I was just standing there like I have been for the past 50 years when all of a sudden I saw a cheese grater running towards me with a mask over it. I thought, what on heaven is that? Next thing I know, the cheese grater is trying to climb up on me because it was getting away from Mandy the Mop, who happened to be furious because the grater had left cheese crumbs all over the kitchen floor back at home. Mandy the Mop and Gary the cheese grater thought they could faffle around all over my head. They messed up my leaf cut and ran back into the house where they were later found by the police. Gary the Grater has a lot of explaining to do, especially in the light of the fact that he was out on parole for a similar incident last year when he broke into someone's back garden and started eating through their cabbage patch. He is rather a strange grater. After all, who likes to eat cabbage? Thanks for joining us today. Over to you, Muhammad Ali, back in the studio. <laughs> Those characters are so funny. I mean, <sighs> Lucy Leaf starting a bonfire. Can Ooh. you believe? I just, oh, it's just beyond me. It really is. Some of these funny characters, where does Captain News find such interesting stories? I don't know. All I could think about was barbecues. <laughs> barbecues. A barbecue sounds kind of good right about now. I'm kind of hungry. How's your fasting going, Pip? Well, you know about my book, don't you? I do know about your book. Mm. Well, so my fasts are getting, I think, easier and easier. That's wonderful. You know, I'm really curious about your canary. Mm -hmm. What did he look like when, when he was... When he was born. Oh, oh look, oh, look. What? There's a photo of him right there. Oh, he's so cute. He's so fluffy and his eyes are all covered with the fur. What was he like when he was born, Pip? Well, you see, mm. well, he was quite a little, little bird. Oh. So he could fit literally in my hand. <gasps> he was that tiny? That Oh, what if I took him out of his cage? Do you think that's a good idea? Um, I, no, 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 no. no. <laughs> I, I think uh, he might want to fly away. Yeah, he might get stuck somewhere in the garden. Like, not that we're trying to imprison him. No, no, not at all. I mean, I'm sure you do let him out of his cage sometimes. I mean, would it be nice to be stuck up there, you know, in here all the time? No, no, no. Oh, and what's that in there? His seeds? Uh, uh, and that's stuff? his food. Ah, I yes. see, I see. Yes. You know, where do canaries live? Where, where do they come from? I, I'm always curious. Well, these birds are from, think about the name. Oh, can Canary Islands. Oh, look, look, and there's a map of the Canary Islands. So there's Tenerife. I think I've been there when I was little. And there's Lanzarote, there's Fuerte, Fuerteventura. Yes, yes. You see, because yeah. it's a group of islands off the coast of North Africa. Oh, and that's where canaries get their names from. That's so cool. Wow. If you want to keep one as a pet, yeah. you need to make sure that the cage is big enough for it oh. and that it eats the right food like oh. that oh i see oh look look and there's another picture of a canary in the cage and the cage is nice and big yes yes um um you know talking about having pets yeah i always wanted a puppy <gasps> A puppy at, a puppy oh, at wow. home. Oh, wow. Yes, yes, yes. Mm. And maybe if I got one, mm. the canary would have a friend. Um, that, 
that's that's a good point. But you see, my mum told me mm. I'm not allowed to have one. Oh. Why? That's actually a really good question. And someone asked Big Sheikh and Little Sheikh the same question too. Really? Yes. Yes, they did. I think we should join the Super Sheikhs now and find out why you can't have a puppy. Okay. Okay. Over, Over to you. You go, you go. You now go. you introduce. No, you go, you go, you go. Okay. Okay. Over, to, Over you. to you. Oh. <laughs> okay, you go, you go, you go. Over to you, Big Sheikh and Little Sheikh. Assalamu alaikum dear children and welcome to Super Sheikhs. I'm Big Sheikh Hassan. And I'm Little Sheikh Hussein. Thank you for sending this brilliant question. Dear Super Sheikh, I want a puppy, but my parents don't let me. Why? Before I answer it, do you know the answer? Puppies are nudges. That's why your parents won't have let you have one. So it would be hard work for your parents to clean up all of its things. Exactly. So you mentioned Nejis. Nejis is different than dirty. Nejis means impure. There are things that, which are dirty but still are pure, and there are things that are look clean but still are impure. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So a dog is impure just like a selected other animals, such as the pig. That's why we don't eat pigs. Impure things are things like poop, wee, and uh, dog's fur, which is going, which is wet. Also, saliva. Saliva is like the spit of the dog. So if it licks you, you're impure, right? Yep. So how do we change things that are impure to being pure? There are certain things that have to be washed a certain number, right? Yep. Most of them, you have to wash how many times? Three. Three times. Most of the things to turn them from nejis to tahir, which is pure, you have to wash most of them three, three times. times. But sometimes it's one time because like from the sink, mm -hmm. it comes out. Exactly. So water from the bucket, for example, you'd have to wash a few times more. Where it's water, running water, so from the tap, for example, or water from a, a stream, you can wash less because that washes it away. And also, when it's outside, the sun, it makes something nejistahir, turn, it turns it into tahir. And if your shoes are nejis, you have to walk on soil. It contains water to make your shoes tahir. Right, so you said um, that we can leave things outside to dry, right? Mm -hmm. From the sun. It has to be from the sun. You can't dry it with a hairdryer, for example. That won't make it tahir. Um, and you said that when you step on poop accidentally, for example, you have to walk on soil, right? Yeah. The soil doesn't actually make it tahir. It just cleans off the poop so you can actually make it tahir later on, right? But it contains water as well. Yes, it contains water, but not enough to make a tahir. Yeah. Right? So, what do we do to make things tahir? We wash them. We right? put it outside so the sun can dry it. Mm -hmm. And we have to clean it, of course. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's scientifically proven that pig is unhealthy for you because they eat rubbish. Exactly. Um, it's scientifically proven that they are unhealthy. They eat their own rubbish. They even eat their own poop. Right. Uh, and that's really disgusting, isn't it? You wouldn't want to eat an animal that eats its own poop. But anyway, the dog, it is nedges. And it would be a lot of work for your parents to clean its poop to clean it and clean its fur, which is going to be all around the house, mm. right? They may look cute, they may be cute,
but they're still messy and create a lot of mess in the house. Right? Yep. Do you agree? Yep. So thank you very much for sending in your question. Uh, Sheikh Hussain, do you want to give us a summary of what we talked about? We talked about dogs on edges and it would be hard work for your parents to mm -hmm. clean up all of its hoop. Right. And its fur and clean it. Exactly. We also mentioned that the pig is impure, that's why we don't eat them. Uh, so thank you very much for sending your question. If you have any other questions, do send them in. And thank you for watching. And ma'as-salama. Oh, Pip, look. I guess now you understand why you can't have a puppy. But you have this wonderful canary here, Coco. And he's lovely as a pet. True, true. I mean, look at the way he just, oh, look at the way he's clinging to the cage and the way he eats his little bird seeds and, you know, and all his. Does he fast? Uh, <laughs> does he fast? Yeah. Uh, um, well, not quite. Not quite. Oh. Um, and and um, uh, it might, well, I mean, yeah, I don't think he would survive if he fasted. No, no, I don't think he did. But if he did fast, I wonder what he would break his fast with. Maybe something mm. like fish and chips or or chicken curry or pizza. That sounds Are good. you mad? Chicken curry? Oh. That's like eating his cousin. Oh, oh my God, you're right. That's, I'm sorry. Sorry, Coco, I didn't mean Cover to. Cover his to... ears. Cover his ears. He didn't hear it. He didn't hear it. Thank <laughs> uh, but yes, no, I think fish and chips would make him quite ill. So what, what does he eat then? Well, hmm. they actually eat seeds. Seeds. Plants. Plants. Small amounts of fruit. Ah. So not like a watermelon. Right. Um, and even things like grass and moss and... Just like this canary. Ah, that's so, well. Wow. Oh, so he's a herbivore, which means it's an animal that doesn't eat meat. Now I see why he can't have any fried food like fish and chips, which are actually one of my favourite foods in the whole world. I can imagine. It's um, a very, very English food isn't it it is and I, I like all types of food actually but don't get me started on food i'm really hungry i was just going to say oh we're fasting remember Layla? yes but you know mm -hmm. sometimes yeah i simply don't have the time to clean his cage but or yeah even feed him on time <gasps> He's usually okay. I'm just so tired trying to fast these days. Oh, Pip. Oh, come on. If something has been left in your care, like a pet, you can't just leave it on its own. As Muslims, it's our duty to care for others, and that includes animals too, great or small. And just because they're different from us, it doesn't mean that we should be unkind to them or forget about their needs. I mean, this lovely canary needs you to look after him in the best possible way. You know what? Yes. I think. Yeah. I feel. Yeah. A story coming on. That's right. You're absolutely spot on. And I have one right here, and this is the Safiri's Live Storybook. I love stories. I love stories too. It's one of the best ways you can learn about something or someone. True. Uh, let's have a look. Where did it go? Do you think the canary likes stories? I think the canary would love to hear a story. Here, let me bring it more towards me, and then um, then it can then it can listen. <laughs> noise he must be excited he must be very excited okay so a man once came to the prophet muhammad peace be upon him carrying with him his belongings and a box he said oh prophet while i was passing through a jungle i heard the voice of some birds babies 
I took them and put them in this box. The moment I did that, their mother came fluttering round my head and the prophet said, put them down. When the man put the box on the ground, the mother of the young birds joined them. Seeing this, the prophet asked the man who now had a look of surprise on his face, are you surprised by the love of the mother towards her young? I swear by him, the almighty Allah who has sent me, surely Allah is more loving to his servants, that means you and I, than the mother to these young birds. So return these baby birds to the place where you took them and let their mother be with them. Where's Coco's mum, Pip? Um, Coco's mum? Well, you see, unfortunately, mm. I think Coco's mum flew away. <gasps> flew away. Maybe she was out looking for food. Maybe. And she got lost and couldn't find her way back to Coco. Maybe. Oh. And the prophet also advised us, fear Allah when you think about animals or use animals, ride them when they are healthy and get off their backs when they're tired because there are lots and lots of rewards for being kind and gentle to animals and for giving them water to drink. Um, um, question? Yes. So uh, does that mean I can ride the canary? Oh, right. The, the, the kind of animals they're talking about here are, are things like horses. Oh. Yes. Because I was going to say, yeah. I don't think you could take my weight. No, I think it's a great deal smaller than you, Pip. Yeah, sorry, sorry to interrupt. Just wanted to clarify. That's all right. Okay. Islam has taught that in the eyes of Allah, animals also have rights just like we do. So they shouldn't be treated badly. They shouldn't be forgotten. And they shouldn't be left to starve without food or water. Imam Ali alayhi salam had some ducks under his care in his house. At the time of his death, he had given really good advice to his sons to take good care of those animals or to set them free if it wasn't possible to look after them properly. You know, that's why I love this religion. It's wonderful. It even teaches us to care for you know, these tiny little creatures. Because yes. sometimes people can feel like they're so important and hmm. special and it makes them feel proud. They look at animals and they think, oh, whatever. Ugh. I don't need to care about them. It's beneath me. Yes, but they're not. No. They have feelings, they have families. So does Coco have any brothers or sisters that you know about? Um, well, you see, like I said, um, he... Uh, if you like, uh, it's like an orphan canary. Because I found him um, and his mum wasn't there. Maybe he had brothers and sisters, but I felt bad because I couldn't see them. So Aww. that's why I took him in. Oh, that's awful. Well, he has a home now, doesn't he? Yes, and maybe one day we can reunite him with his family. Maybe one day we can, that would be lovely. And you know, the Holy Quran has also taught us that in the eyes of Allah, there's really no difference between the human world and the animal world. In the Quran it says, there is not an animal that lives on the earth, nor a being that flies on its wings, but is a part of a community like you. We haven't left anything out from this book and in the end, we shall all be gathered together. Oh. Well, you see, that's why mm. I thought, just like the prophet, mm. and like you said, we treat animals and humans the same. Yes, I we should do. adopt him because he was in need of care. Absolutely right. I mean, could you imagine if this lovely little canary was out there? on the streets oh, or flying around no no, oh. no oh how would he feed himself yeah how would he look after himself where would he get this tasty bird seeds yeah. from oh dear 
Yeah. You know, this month is filled with so many blessings and reciting the Quran as much as you can is one of the most wonderful ways you can feel that closeness to Allah. So just like we care for each other mm -hmm. and we care for animals, yes. that's one way of being close to Allah. Fasting in the month of Ramadan yes. is another way of being close to Allah and reciting lots of Quran is also another way. So wow. why don't we listen to some Quran now? I would love to. It always sounds so beautiful. It is, absolutely. Let's learn Quran. Surah Al-Ikhlas Bism Allah Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل هو الله أحد قل هو الله أحد الله الصمد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل هو الله أحد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد صدق الله العلي العظيم I love listening to the Quran, Pip. It, I find it really makes me feel calm and, and happy and relaxed because these are the words of Allah. So true. You know, yes. sometimes yeah. when I'm really worried yeah. and stressed, yeah. I struggle to go to sleep. Oh. But I was told mm. if I listened to some Quran, mm. it would help. <gasps> and now I sleep like a baby. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, but sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Do you feel sleepy now, Pip? No, 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 no. Okay. No. I hope not. No, 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 no. What, do you find me boring? No. Oh, good. I hope you don't find me boring no. because I was just going to say that my mum taught me to read Ayatul Kursi before I go to sleep. Ooh. And that's a very, very powerful um, piece of the Quran and it's like a dua as yes, well. Yes. And it can protect you. Definitely. We used to recite it every day on our way to school. Ah, oh, and it, yeah, and then Allah protects you and he sends his angels to protect you as well. It's actually a really beautiful ayah of the Quran. Yes. How much Quran have you read this month? Oh, now you're testing me. No. Oh. Mm. Um, well, I tried every day yeah. to learn a new surah. Oh, wow, that's amazing. Which surah? So I started at the back of the Quran yeah. with all the small ones. Yeah, that's how I started. I learnt like, Kul huwa Allahu Ahad, and then I learnt... Which is Surah Ikhlas. Yeah, the one we just listened to. Yes. Yeah, and that's the one that we recite in our daily prayers. Yes. Oh. And how else has your fast been going? I mean, I know that sometimes fasting these long days can be really difficult. Oh, you got a... Did you get a dry mouth? Yes, my tongue feels like sandpaper. Oh dear, I know. It's because we can't drink any water either. Oh, but oh. Coco can. Yes. Coco um, doesn't fast though, but yes. that's okay. He's got his little water tank here. Yes. Um, and sometimes when I see him drinking, yeah. I get thirsty. Oh, I don't blame you. I kind of feel thirsty now myself. But you know. Yeah. What doesn't kill you only makes you stronger. That's very true. The fast 
and this is for, for you as well, Please. Pip, and for the children at home, it does make you stronger. It's a month of training where you learn to pick up good habits, yes. like being organised. You know, Penny and, and Muhammad Ali talked about being organised. And it also trains you to have healthy habits like eating right, uh, eating dates and watermelon and, and less kind of fried food at iftar time. Definitely. Yeah? Yes. What, have your, what, have, what good habits have you picked up, Pip? Well, like you said, mm. I've treated Ramadan yes. like, like boot camp for the year. <gasps> boot camp? What do you mean? So, like you said, like, it's like training. Yeah. Like, like I'm getting ready to run a marathon. Oh, oh like yes. I'm getting ready for battle. Wow. I'm getting ready to make myself strong. Oh, that's really, really good. And you know, Allah has, you know, given this month to us and has asked us to fast and told us that we must fast in this month because this is the month of the Quran and it was revealed in this month, wasn't it? Yes. In fact, mm. we're in the last days where they say yeah. the Qur'an may have been revealed. <gasps> That's absolutely right. We are in the last 10 days of Ramadan, so we should try and make the most of it and, you know, increase our amals and maybe give more charity. And, you know, and just, let's, you know, we can just think about Allah's magnificence. Like, the Qur'an is a gift to us. The Ahlul Bayt are like a gift to us, and so is the whole universe. That is so true. You know, when I look up at the nighttime sky and I see the stars shimmering brightly, and some of them are really big, and you can see the Big Dipper, and you can see a constellation of beautiful stars, you know, it makes me wonder, how was this world created? And it also makes me wonder about the different planets that are out there because planet Earth is just one of nine planets. Really? Yes, it is. So, are there like other people or creatures on these other planets? I don't know, actually. That's a really good question. But mm. I do know a really famous scholar called Ibn al-Haytham and he has... <laughs> Yeah, he has a magical telescope and when he looks through it, he can see lots and lots of different things. I know all about Ibn Haytham. Yeah. He's amazing. He's wonderful. Why don't we join him now and let's learn all about the planets Jupiter and Mercury. Oh, yes, yes, please do. Let's do that. Wonderful. Okay, um, are you going to introduce him? You can introduce him. I can? Yeah. Okay. <coughs> Right, children, it's time now for the wonderful Ibn Haytham, and we're going to learn all about Jupiter and Mercury in this episode of I Look, I See. What a great introduction. Thank you. Over Thank you. to you, Ibn Haytham. Alhamdulillah. Allah is truly superb. Oh, oh assalamu alaikum, my explorer friends. Welcome. I'm Ibn Haytham, and this is my marvelous telescope. It's special because it goes back in time, and I can visit any place you can think of. I sit here night after night, admiring Allah's creation. Oh. What's that sound? Come, let's take a look and see. Subhanallah, what do we have here? It's 
the amazing and giant world of Jupiter and his tiny friends, Mercury. Oh, wow. It is truly mind-blowing. You know, if there is one planet I could visit, it would be the giant of them all, Jupiter itself. But what makes Jupiter so special? Ah, yes, I bet you're wondering. Subhanallah. Let's see. Come, let's find out. Wow. Well, Jupiter, as I said, is the largest planet in the solar system. But it spins very quickly on its axis. You have to imagine that an axis is it's a straight line around which something rotates. In this case, Jupiter. Did you know, though, a day on Jupiter lasts only 9 hours and 55 minutes? Yikes! I get dizzy just thinking about it. And did you know it takes 12 Earth years for Jupiter to orbit the Sun? Orbit basically means to go around something. Now the question is, how much would you weigh on Jupiter? If you travel to Jupiter for a holiday, let's say, you would be very, very heavy. Let's say on Earth you weigh 30 kilograms around, then on Jupiter you would weigh around 80 kilograms. Can you believe it? This is because Jupiter is such a large planet which has much more gravity. It's like the Earth pulling on you and keeping you on the ground. That pull is gravity at work. Every object in the universe that weighs something puts a big gravitational pull or force on every other thing that also weighs something. The size of the pull depends on the weight and mass of the objects, you see. Jupiter is so big that you could fit all the other planets in the solar system inside it. This wonderfully large planet is roughly 466 million miles from the Sun? Oh, that's so far away! SubhanAllah! Jupiter has 62 moons and Ganymede is its largest. It's bigger than both Mercury and Pluto. Ooh, what's that big red spot though? I bet you know. That's right, the red spot is known as Jupiter's Great Red Spot and Jupiter is famous for it. The red spot is a huge storm that has been constantly going on on Jupiter for like over 400 years. Winds inside this storm reach speeds of about 270 miles per hour. Yes, I know, wow, that is fast. The red spot of Jupiter is the biggest, most violent storm in the entire known universe. That spot is at least three times the size of Earth, yes. So, I guess taking an umbrella won't help much against any kind of stormy weather. <laughs> oh. Anyway, imagine getting caught up in that storm. It wouldn't be very much fun, would it? Pretty scary stuff, anyway. <sighs> Jupiter looks swirly from a distance, I know. It is a gaseous planet, you see. Its air is like an ocean of gases. The currents in these gases, they're like wind here on Earth, you know, cause ever-changing swirls. I think that these swirls make the planet look pretty colourful, don't you? Scientists believe, though, that a mixture of sulphur and phosphorus in the air make this lovely colour. Sulphur and phosphorus are two special chemicals that are very dangerous, mind you. But we still aren't sure why the swirls continue to change. Some believe the winds and changes that are caused by them are in fact the result of the heat inside the planet. And some feel they happen because of Jupiter's fast rotation speed. When something rotates, it goes around and around, and in Jupiter's case, very fast indeed, yes. Mercury, though, is the smallest planet in the solar system. Mercury has a rocky surface and an iron core. The iron core in Mercury is very large compared to other rocky planets like Earth and Mars. This makes Mercury's heaviness very high compared to its size, yes. Mercury is an empty planet covered with craters from impacts of asteroids and other objects. It looks very similar to Earth's moon. Mercury has very little 
atmosphere, you see, and rotates very slowly. A single day on Mercury is as long as almost 60 Earth days. I know, <laughs> don't want to get grounded there. <laughs> as a result of its long day and little atmosphere, Mercury has some wild extremes in temperature. The side facing the sun is incredibly hot, 800 degrees Fahrenheit, while the side away from the sun is super cold, minus 300 degrees Fahrenheit. Oh, is Mercury like our planet Earth though, or is it very different? Well, Mercury is in fact much smaller than Earth. It's actually a lot closer to the size of Earth's moon, in fact. It has a shorter year, but a much longer day. There is no air to breathe, and the temperature changes wildly each day, even though it's a really long day. Mercury is similar, though, in that it has a hard, rocky surface, like Earth's. You could walk around on Mercury if you had a spacesuit and could handle the extreme temperatures. So, if you could choose which planet you would visit, which one would it be? I think I would head for Jupiter. There's something out of this world about it that, you know, <laughs> just gets me going. So, anyway. Subhanallah, Jupiter is spectacular and so is Mercury. Allah created this amazing universe and everything in it. It's been said that it's impossible to see the whole world in our lifetime, but it doesn't mean we shouldn't try. <laughs> I'm going to keep searching for more and more that's out there in this wonderful universe that Allah has created. Until next time, my explorer friends, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Subhanallah. Ibn al Haytham and his magical telescope, they just go everywhere together, don't they? I wish I had a telescope like that. Oh, well, maybe we can get you one. Really? Yeah, maybe we can get it for you as like an Eid present or something. Oh, I would love that. But you know, one of my favourite planets in the whole wide world is actually Jupiter because it's so big and it's got that big red spot. You know, like how you've got your heart in your chest yes. and it's big and red. Well, Jupiter has a big red spot. But it's not its heart, it's actually a storm that's been raging for hundreds and hundreds of years. SubhanAllah. Wow. Yeah. And Mercury's so tiny and cute, just like Coco's. Bit tiny. like Coco. <laughs> but Pip, yes. um, I have something here yes. that's really interesting and I'm really excited about. And I know mm. that you've been talking about something and it's your new book called Pip's First Fast. My book! Your book! I know, I was, I was watching TV the other day and I was just flicking through the channels and I was looking, I was on Sophia TV and I saw you talking about your new book and how it's, a, you know, coming soon. And then, and then I looked it up and I found it and I, and I thought, oh wow, it's all about your first fast. Yes! Subhanallah. Well, that's what I was saying earlier, yeah. that you see, um, um, you know, because of writing the book yeah. and um, uh, being able to express myself, oh. I feel like I really have benefited this month. Oh, and you know, I think the children have benefited too. Would, you, would it be okay if I read it? Of course! Yeah, because I think the children at home would like to hear this story as well. Yes. Okay, so it's called Pip's First Fast. So let's let's go to the Fabulous. first part. Yeah. So it says, Pip is so happy that Ramadan is here. It's very exciting at this time of year. <gasps> oh. When family and friends get together and open their fast with a lovely prayer. Pip learns to fast bit by bit. You've got to remember. He is only six. <laughs> oh. In summer, the days are hot and long. 
Pip goes to school. He has to be strong. I understand Pip. He wakes up for Suhoor and fasts until lunch. And that's when he has a tasty small munch. Yummy! <laughs> he fasts again from noon until dusk, waiting until he can break his fast. Oh, mm. You know, he wants to fast like the grown-ups do. Don't worry, Pip. You will very soon. Hope so. The time for iftar is almost near. Pip's belly is rumbling. Can you hear? I think I can. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, Pip. You'll eat very soon. You can help your mum prepare the food. You're a good boy, Pip. Pip gets the juice, the nuts and the plates. Quickly now, you don't want to be late. He breaks his fast with water and dates. Then he gets ready to go and pray. Oh, He makes a du'a for you and me that for this whole month we're happy. This is a month that is truly blessed. Of all the months, it is simply the best. best. Oh, wow, that, that was a lovely book. So you don't fast the whole day? No. No, so you, you wake up for suhoor. Yes. And then you, you fast until lunch. Mm -hmm. And that's when you have a tasty small munch. munch. Oh, and then you continue fasting. You know, I think I remember when I was a little girl, that's how I first started fasting because the days were quite long and um, you know my mum was like okay if you can't fast for the whole 12 hours mm -hmm. fast for six then have a small snack to well, eat. Well you see mm. it's a bit like we keep talking about getting strong. Yes. So uh, yes this is uh, my way of having a break in between Yes. and um, you know eventually I'll get better do the whole thing. Absolutely. And you know, don't worry, Pip, because you will eventually fast like the grown-ups too. Just like all the children who've been watching at home, they're, when they grow up, they'll remember that they fasted when they were little and they had lots of training. And that way, they're going to be really ready to fast when they're grown up. Yes. It's like when you want to run a marathon, yes. you start with one mile, then two miles, then exactly. three, four, all exactly. the way up to the marathon. Is there anything you want to say to the children about fasting in this month, Pip? Um, I would just like to say mm. that, remember, fasting is not just about, you know, starving or being thirsty and, mm. you know, not eating and drinking. Mm. It's about learning to have self-discipline. <gasps> oh, I see. That means how you behave. Yes. What you say, even what you think. Having self-control. Yeah, so when you feel like having that sweet and nobody's watching, you remember that Allah is watching you. Exactly. Oh, Pip, it was so lovely to see you again. Thank you so much for coming and joining me. Are you going to come back again very soon? Oh, definitely, definitely. Oh. It had been such a long time. Oh. I really enjoyed this. Thank you. And thank you for bringing Coco with you. Oh, it's a pleasure. Aww. Absolute pleasure. He's so lovely. Look at his little face and his little eyes. And yes. Aww. He's a cutie, isn't he? He is a sweetie pie. A bit like you, Pip. Oh, you're going to make me blush. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, thank you very much for, to all the children who've been uh, watching at home. And uh, inshallah, we'll see you again this Wednesday at four o'clock on Sky 763. Inshallah. Inshallah. Ma everybody. Ma